Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So things have been off to an absolutely wild start today with the new Crimson Vow spoilers. So if you haven't seen my episode on Necro Duality, yeah, this thing is gonna be an absolute house in zombie tribal deck, so make sure you check that episode out. And of course, make sure you check out my other episode today on the card that I'm actually most excited about so far on Horrifying Dollhouse. Yeah, a very strange card, but a really cool one, and it's gonna work fantastically in one of my favorite decks. Regardless, do not go anywhere. Please stay seated and remain buckled in. If you're in a vehicle of some sort, and actually if you're driving that vehicle, you shouldn't be watching a YouTube video, so don't do that. Uh, but, but yeah, basically, uh, metaphorically, buckle in and prepare yourself because this card, Cultivator Colossus, is absolutely broken and it took exactly two seconds for me to find a way to break it. Regardless though, a big thank you to Eddie for making me aware of this card because actually I, uh, I was recording another episode um, and, uh, and then Eddie was like, hey, what about this card? And then I was like, oh my goodness, what about this other card that works incredibly well with it? And then Eddie was like, oh my goodness, you're right. A and then yeah. Uh, this is where we're at right now. So again, thank you to Eddie for, well, all the great discussions on this card, as well as all the other cards, all of your input. And of course, if I make any mistakes on this episode or any other episode, always make sure you blame Eddie, because it's never my fault, it's always Eddie's. And with all that said, let's jump into it. So Cultivator Colossus is a mythic green card, and yeah, just like every other mythic and rare green card, it's essentially always going to be good, because you know, green always gets the good things. <laughs> Regardless, uh, good does not summarize how just powerful this card is. It's a star star plant beast with trample that costs four, green, green, green. Now its power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control, and of course that's nowhere near why it's powerful, because of course it has an ETB that does this. When it enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you do, draw a card and repeat this process. So yeah, calling that incredibly powerful is a bit of an understatement. And we'll get to the exact card that I thought of when I saw this card that is just broken with it here in just a little bit, I promise. But yeah, even just at a base level, this is okay. What you're going to do is this is going to come into play. You're gonna take all the lands that in your hand and, and they're gonna come into play, tapped, sure, okay. Uh, but you get to draw a card for every single one of those. And then also we're just basically gonna be, you know, if, if you draw into any lands as well, you get to put those into play too, and you draw some more. And if you draw more lands, you put more lands into play and you see where this is going. But of course there is a way to just break this whole thing open. And yes, now it's time for us to get to that card that I immediately thought about and that is just broken with this. And that card would, of course, be Abundance. Abundance is an enchantment that says, if you would draw a card, you may instead choose land or non-land and reveal cards in the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind. Put that card in your hand and put all their cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order. So, yeah, I mean, the, the combo essentially works like this. All you need to do is have Abundance in play when your Cultivator Colossus hits the battlefield. That's it. Uh, okay, I guess I guess there's one other thing. You need to make the correct choice every single time with abundance by literally just saying land. So obviously that's not all that difficult. Now the reason that this works is because abundance is a replacement effect for your draw. And actually there's some other cards that Eddie pointed out that work well with Cultivator Colossus, but don't, you know, get broken like abundance does with it. 
but we'll talk about those here in a bit. Regardless, when Cultivator Colossus comes into play, you can put a land card from your hand on the battlefield tap, so you do that. Then you draw a card. Then Abundance is like, hey, okay, you're drawing a card, sweet. Would you like that to be a land or a non-land? And then you say, land. So, cool, you reveal until you hit a land, you get a land in your hand. And then Cultivator Colossus is like, hey, let's repeat this process. Do you want to put a land into play? And you're like, yeah, let's put a land into play. Cool. Okay, cool, you did that. Draw a card. Abundance is like, hey, instead of drawing that card, let's select land or non-land. And then you select land. And you see where this is going. Literally, just by having Abundance in play, when Cultivator Colossus hits the battlefield, you get every single land in your library into play. Yes, they're tapped, but you have every single land in your library in play. And with this, actually, if you really are going to, you know, put both these things in a deck, you really just might want to, you know, jot down how many lands you actually have in your deck or kind of know that number. So that essentially, once you put that last land into play and then you get that draw, you know, with Cult of Fear Colossus, you choose non-land so you don't just end up whiffing with Abundance. But at that point, does it even really matter if you whiffed because you literally have... 30 plus lands in play and you're probably gonna win from there one would hope so yeah again a green mythic that took exactly two seconds to break who knew again as i mentioned before eddie brought up a couple of cards that players might think can essentially do a very similar thing to this but it's not technically there because again abundance is a replacement effect you need to do the cultivator colossus thing all at once essentially but abundance kind of gets around that because it's like okay instead of drawing you get to do this it's not like a trigger that happens again i'm no rules expert so i'm probably saying all of this incorrectly and please correct me in the comments below if i'm wrong if i've misspoken okay regardless again let's move on and talk about one of those cards that works really well with cultivator colossus but isn't probably nearly as effective as many players might think it is and that would actually be a card like Tatiova Benthic Druid. And actually, I'm showing Essence Flux on the same screen here for a reason. I promise I'll get to that here in a second. Tatiova says, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. So this is not a replacement effect. And again, because the way that Cultivator Colossus is worded, you're essentially doing all of that in kind of one action. So you're not, you know, being able to put a land into play and then, you know, get the draw from Cultivator Colossus, then also get a draw from Tatiova because that's a separate trigger. So you kind of need to wait till all of your Cultivator Colossus things happen first, and then you get those landfall triggers with Tatiova. Essentially, you're going to get a lot of delayed gain life and draw triggers. And yes, that's still very impactful, but you can't just keep going with Cultivator Colossus getting a lot of things in play by taking advantage of the cards that Tatiova is giving you. That being said, obviously, that is an ETB on Cultivator Colossus because why not? <laughs> Again, Mythic Green spells. So yeah, if you really want to, you can just blink it, you know, with something like Essence Flux and do it again and get all those lanes you just got from Tatiova's triggers into play as well, draw more cards, get some more blank spells, and have fun. Regardless, again, a big thank you to Eddie for pointing all of this out because I'm sure I would have made plenty of mistakes on this episode, you know, on top of all the other ones that I've already made. So yes, thank you, Eddie. And also thank you, Eddie, for pointing out other cards that actually do really work well with this new green mythic like Underrealm Lich. It says if you would draw a card and sell the top three cards of your library, then put one of them in your hand and the rest in your graveyard. So again, this is a draw replacement like Abundance. So yes, this can happen kind of in tandem with your new green mythic giant ETB thingy. You put a land into play, your cultivator is going to have you draw a card, but instead you're like, okay, I'll just look at the top three cards of my library, get one of them in my hand, the rest go in my graveyard. So if one of those three cards is a land, congratulations, you can do it again, and again, and again, and again, while milling yourself for an absolute ton. And yeah, if you're running a card like Underrealm Lich, chances are it's in a deck that really cares about the graveyard and filling the graveyard, so have fun milling yourself for a ton and getting a lot of fun things in there. But you can also increase your chances to hit more lands with things like Thought Reflection and Teferi's Ageless Insight. Thought Reflection says if you draw a card, draw two cards instead, and Teferi's Ageless Insight basically does the exact same thing, except it doesn't count the first card that you draw in each of your draw steps. Regardless, now when you get that land into play with Cultivator Colossus, you basically say, cool, I did that, now I get to draw two cards, and then, yeah, if one of those is a land, I'll do it again, and again, and again, and again. You're just increasing your chances to hit more and more lands off the top of your library. Another fun card that Eddie actually pointed out was Scouting Track, which, okay, yeah, this card does not see play in pretty much any decks, but it's pretty fun, so here we go. Search your library for any number of basic land cards, reveal them, and set them aside. Shuffle your library, then put those cards on top of it in any order. Essentially, again, go get any number of lands, put them on top of your library, play your Cultivator Colossus, and get every single land off the top of your library into play. Very specific just for that card, but a lot of fun. 
Regardless, now that we've talked about different cards that can well either be broken with this or that can really help with the Cultivator Colossus, let's talk about some commanders that actually might want this in the 99 of their decks. First up, and one that we actually talked about earlier, Tatiova Benthic Druid, yeah, could still utilize a card like this, even though it's not really, you know, broken with it, it's still incredibly powerful. Get a bunch of lands in play, draw a bunch of cards, draw a bunch of extra cards, gain a bunch of extra life, maybe, you know, if you've got to wait again, get it back or blanket or whatever, or recast it, do it again, and again, and have fun. Of course, the same can be said about AC Tire of the Guy Straight, which is basically just, you know, Tatiova, but, you know, slightly more expensive, but lets you play initial land, doesn't give you life gain. Simic, okay? But yeah, if you want a deck that's got both Tatiova and AC and a lot of other gross things, how about Yark the Desecrated with a landfall deck built around it? Yark is basically a Panharmonicon in the command zone, so yeah, what's well, just throwing in another giant green mythic into that deck? And of course, speaking of landfall, let's talk about the angry jelly bean itself, Omnath Locus of Rage. It has landfall. Whenever land enters battlefield under control, you get a 5 5 red and green elemental creature token. And whenever it or their elemental dies, it deals 3 damage to any target. So play your cultivator, get a ton of lands into play, and yeah, make a ton of angry elementals. But a commander that is essentially guaranteed to give you an absurd amount of lands into play, though, with this card is Sasai Orochi Ascendant. Sasai basically makes it so that once you've got 7 lands in your hand, you can reveal them and then flip Sasai. And then you just have your lands tap for an absurd amount of mana. Basically, you know, if you've got seven forests in play, they each tap for seven mana apiece. So you play the Cultivator Colossus, then, you know, dump all those lands, uh, you know, that you just revealed into play. So that's an extra seven lands in play. And now all your forests tap for, you know, an absurd amount each. And then you drop probably more forests, because again, a deck like this tends to run like 45 or so or probably more forests. So yeah, just, just do that and have fun. And actually, Eddie was talking about a deck that was probably being joked about on the internet, but I'm sure many players will actually go out and build at some point. Maelstrom Water plus Cultivator Colossus plus, you know, basically a landfall trigger of some sort and just a bunch of lands. And, and that's it. You know, just basically get all your lands into play and woo! So yeah, again, a big thank you to Eddie for all the great discussions around this card and for making me aware of it and for making it so I at least don't mess up a couple of things in the episode as well. But yeah, Cultivator Colossus, like many green rares and mythics, is just absolutely absurd. Again, it took exactly two seconds to say, oh, Abundance would work really well with this, and yeah, if you want to do that, cool, get your Abundance out, get this out, and get every single land in your library into play and have fun. And of course, there's other cards that work really well with this and other synergies that are to be had. And actually, I didn't even mention this because, again, green mythics like this, just they have just an incredibly powerful effect and are just powerful on their own too. I forgot that literally this is a power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control. So after you do that with abundance, this is what, like a 36-36 trample or, or whatnot. Yeah, wizards, it's time to start giving mono white some, some cards that, you know, are this kind of impactful, okay? And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.